series we had a we generated we 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 we, we constructed the generating function now what we have is we have the odd numbers the odd natural numbers uh, and we have a way to recursively define them okay so that's that's a very simple example okay let's have a look at another example okay of a recurrence let's say it's a recurrence that looks something like this okay so let's say here's another example okay? so what we might have is something like this. We might say that a n is equal to uh, twice a n minus one, okay, uh, plus three times a n minus two, okay. Uh, let's just keep it simple like that. So to get the end term, we need a term before it, and we need a term that precedes that. So we need two terms. So to define this recurrence relation, we need two starting points. So we need a zero. Let's say a zero is equal to three, and we also need a one. So the next term, because we need two start, to, we need two previous term to find the next term. So let's say a one is equal to four. Okay? So we have the two first terms in this sequence. This sequence starts off three, four. What's the next term in this sequence? Well, a two must be equal to twice a two minus one plus three times a two minus two, which is effectively two times a1 plus three times a0. Now we already know what a1 and a0 are. a1 is a four, so it's two times four plus three times three. Uh, what does that give us? That gives us an a plus a nine, so we have 17. And we can continue, we could get the next term in this sequence. So let's say a3, for example. Well, a3 must be equal to twice the previous term, which is a3 minus one, plus three times the term that precedes the previous one, which is a three minus two, which is effectively two times a two plus three times a one. Now, we already know what a two is. We've just calculated it, it's 17. So this is two times 17 plus three times a one, and a one uh, is one of our base cases. It's defined to be equal to four. So two times 17 is 24 plus three times four gives us 12. So what we effectively have here is we have 46. So this recurrence relation Okay. generates it generates the sequence the sequence that looks like this but it starts off with a three that's a zero followed by a four followed by a two is 17 followed by a three is 46 and so on okay so you can see that these recurrence relations allow us to generate allow us to generate a uh, particular sequences. Let's have a look at another one, okay? So let's say we have a look at something like, let's say, another example, okay? Another example. Now, I'm not defining these to be of a particular form. I'm not saying that these are linear homogeneous recurrence relations just yet. We'll define them now in a moment, but we are interested in linear homogeneous recurrence relations. So let's see what some other types of relations, recurrence relations could look like. So maybe I have an example that looks like this. Maybe a n uh, is equal to, let's say, two times the previous term, a n minus one plus three times, let's say, a n minus one times a n minus two. Okay. So here's another recurrence relation. Once again, it's defined, the nth term is defined in terms of the previous one and the one that precedes that. So we need a base case, a zero, and let's say that's one, and let's say a two for argument's sake, let's say a two is simply equal to, let's say two. Okay? So what we end up with is if we want to, sorry, a one, a one is equal to two. So if I want to calculate a two, a two is equal to two times a two minus one plus three times a two minus one times a two minus two. These are all indices, okay? These are all subscripts here, yeah? Okay. So what effectively we have is two times a one plus three times a one times a zero. And we've already defined a one. A one is, is a two. So this is two times two plus three times a one is still two and a zero is one. So this gives us a four plus six, which is equal to 10. And we could do the next term. Let's say we want a three. A3 is equal to, well, it's equal to two times the previous one, which is A3 minus one plus three times the previous, which is A3 minus one times the one that precedes that, which is A3 minus two, which gives us two times A2 plus three times A2 times A1. 
Now we've just calculated what A2 is. A2 is 10, so this is 2 times 10 plus 3 times 10 times A1 is A2. So this becomes 20 plus, you can see, this is 3 times 10 gives us 30 times 2 gives us 60. So what we end up with is 80. So this particular recurrence relation generates, generates the sequence it generates the sequence, sequence, well, the A0 term, the first term is a 1, the next term is a 2, the term after that is a 10, and the term after that is an 80, dot, 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 okay? What I'm really trying to get across here is this, is that we can have many different ways to define these, yeah, okay? You can see, actually, that in relation to the first example, okay, in relation to the first example that we had, uh, we defined the nth term in terms of the previous one plus a constant, okay, right? In this one, we defined, right, in the second example, we defined the nth term in terms of the pre 